Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, February 28, 1906 to June 20, 1947, was an American mobster who was a driving force behind the development of the Las Vegas Strip. You'll know why he got the nickname Bugsy, worked as the mob's hitman, first acted as assassin when he was 11 years old, was a childhood friend of Al Capone's, famous friends from the world of movies. What were their names? Multiple mistresses among the socialites. Why mob bosses ordered his murder, or revealed to be a love triangle execution. Siegel was influential within the Jewish mob, along with his childhood friend and fellow gangster Meyer Lansky, and he also held significant influence within the Italian-American mafia, and the largely Italian Jewish National Crime Syndicate. Described as handsome and charismatic, he became one of the first front-page celebrity gangsters. Early life. Benjamin Siegel was born on February 28, 1906, in the Williamsburg neighborhood of Brooklyn in New York City, New York, the second of five children of a poor Ashkenazi Jewish family that emigrated to the U.S. from the Galicia region of what was then Austria-Hungary. His parents, Jenny, Rhea Kenthel, and Max Siegel, constantly worked for meager wages. As a boy, Siegel left school and joined a gang on Lafayette Street on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. He committed mainly thefts until he met Mo Sedway. Together with Sedway, he developed a protection racket in which he threatened to incinerate pushcart owners' merchandise unless they paid him a dollar. He soon built up a lengthy criminal record dating from his teenage years, that included armed robbery, rape, and murder. Even at the beginning of his criminal path Siegel, because of his temper and habit of acting without thinking received the nickname, Bugsy. It came from the slang expression, go bugs, roughly meaning to go off the rails, crazy, which was used to describe the reckless behavior of those who were easily driven out of their senses and were characterized by desperate courage. Siegel couldn't stand the nickname, preferring to be called Ben, and in his presence no one dared to address him otherwise. The Bugs and Meyer Mob During adolescence, Siegel befriended Meyer Lansky, who applied a brilliant intellect to forming a small mob whose activities expanded to gambling and car theft. Lansky, who had already had a run-in with Charles Lucky Luciano, saw a need for the Jewish boys of his Brooklyn neighborhood to organize in the same manner as the Italians and Irish. The first person he recruited for his gang was Siegel. There is speculation that Bugsy and Lansky first acted as assassins in 1917, although they were 11 and 15 years old, respectively, at the time. Lansky had an acquaintance with Lucky Luciano, whom he had known since high school. In 1915, he went to prison for drug distribution and a year and a half later was released. Lansky and Siegel volunteered to deal with the son of an Irish policeman who denounced Luciano. They probably killed him, as the young man disappeared and his body was never found. Soon their teenage gang attracted the attention of the big crime bosses. In early 1919, during a dice game that Lansky and Siegel had organized, they were attacked by a group of unfamiliar bandits. After beating everyone present, they relayed the words of gangster Giuseppe Joe Boss Masuria that profits should be shared. Nevertheless, Bugsy, living up to his nickname, was not about to give in without a fight. He and his gang met Masuria's men and, despite the considerable numerical superiority of their opponents, prevailed over them in a fight. Although the police detained them for disorderly conduct, Bugsy and the others got off with a small fine. He became involved in bootlegging within several major East Coast cities. He also worked as the mob's hitman, whom Lansky hired out to other crime families. The two formed the Bugs and Meyer mob, which handled hits for the various bootleg gangs operating in New York and New Jersey doing so almost a decade before murder, Int was formed. The gang kept themselves busy by hijacking the liquor cargoes of rival outfits, and were known to be responsible for the killing and removal of several rival gangland figures. Siegel's gangmates included Abner Longhi Swillman, Louis Lepka Buckelter, and Lansky's brother, Jake, Joseph Doc Stocker, another member of the Bugs and Meyer mob, recalled to Lansky biographers that Siegel was fearless and saved his friends' lives as the mob moved into bootlegging. Bugsy never hesitated when danger threatened, Stocker told Yuri Dan while we tried to figure out what the best move was. Bugsy was already shooting, when it came to action there was no one better. I've never known a man who had more guts. Siegel was also a boyhood friend to Al Capone. When there was a warrant for Capone's arrest on a murder charge, Siegel allowed him to hide out with an ant. He first smoked opium during his youth and was involved in the drug trade. By age 21, he was making money and flaunted it. He bought an apartment at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel and a Tudor home in Scarsdale, New York. 
he wore flashy clothes and participated in New York City nightlife. From May 13 to 16, 1929, Lansky and Siegel attended the Atlantic City Conference, representing the Bugs and Meyer mob. Luciano and former Chicago South Side gang leader Johnny Torrio held the conference at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey. At the conference, the two men discussed the future of organized crime and the future structure of the mafia crime families, Siegel stated. The Yids and the Dagos will no longer fight each other. Marriage and Family On January 28, 1929, Siegel married Esther Krakauer, his childhood sweetheart. They had two daughters, Millicent Siegel, later Millicent Rosen, and Barbara Siegel, later Barbara Saperstein. He had a reputation as a womanizer and the marriage ended in 1946. His wife moved with their teenage daughters to New York. Murder, Incorporated. By the late 1920s, Lansky and Siegel had ties to Luciano and Frank Costello, future bosses of the Genovese crime family. Siegel, Albert Anastasia, Vito Genovese, and Joe Adonis allegedly were the four gunmen who shot New York mob boss Joe Masuria to death on Luciano's orders on April 15, 1931, ending the Castellamarese War. On September 10 of that year, Luciano hired four gunmen from the Bugs and Meyer mob, some sources identify Siegel as being one of the gunmen, to murder Salvatore Maranzano in his New York office, establishing Luciano's rise to the top of the mafia and marking the beginning of modern American organized crime. California In the late 1930s, the East Coast mob sent Siegel to California. Once in Los Angeles, Siegel recruited gang boss Mickey Cohen as his chief lieutenant. On tax returns, Siegel claimed to earn his living through legal gambling at Santa Anita Park. He soon took over Los Angeles' numbers racket and used money from the syndicate to help establish a drug trade route from Mexico and organized circuits with the Chicago Outfits Wire Services. Hollywood In Hollywood, Siegel was welcomed in the highest circles and befriended movie stars. He was known to associate with George Raft, Clark Gable, Gary Cooper and Cary Grant, as well as studio executives Louis Mayer and Jack Warner. Actress Jean Harlow was a friend of Siegel and godmother to his daughter Millicent. Siegel bought real estate and threw lavish parties at his Beverly Hills home. He gained admiration from young celebrities, including Tony Curtis, Phil Silvers, and Frank Sinatra. Bugsy lived large, settling into a 35-room mansion he bought from singer Lawrence Tibbet for $60,000. Being gallant with the ladies and handsome in appearance, women liked him and had numerous mistresses. One of them, socialite Countess Dorothy DeFrasso, and his actor pal George Raft introduced him to the film society. His mistresses included starlets Ketty Galleon, Wendy Berry, and Marie McDonald, who bore the eloquent nickname The Body. In California, Siegel also got a steady date, brunette Virginia Hill, who was in the smuggling business. Their romance was quite turbulent, accompanied by countless quarrels and reconciliations and lasted until the death of the gangster in 1947. Although Esta Krakauer and Siegel's marriage was not officially dissolved, rumors circulated that he and Virginia had married in Mexico City shortly before his death. It is known that Hill helped him make connections in Mexico, after which Bugsy was involved for a time in supplying heroin from Mexico to California. In Hollywood, Siegel worked with the syndicate to form illegal rackets. He devised a plan of extorting movie studios, he would take over local trade unions, such as the Screen Extras Guild and the Los Angeles Teamsters, and stage strikes to force studios to pay him off so that unions would start working again. Siegel borrowed money from celebrities and did not pay them back, knowing that they would never ask him for the money. During his first year in Hollywood, he received more than US dollars in loans from movie stars. Las Vegas in the mid-1940s, Siegel was lining things up in Las Vegas while his lieutenants worked on a business policy to secure all gambling in Los Angeles. In May 1946, he decided that the agreement with Wilkerson had to be altered to give him control of the Flamingo. With the Flamingo, Siegel would supply the gambling, the best liquor and food, and the biggest entertainers at reasonable prices. Wilkerson was eventually coerced into selling all stakes in the Flamingo under the threat of death and he went into hiding in Paris for a time. From this point the Flamingo became syndicate run. Las Vegas beginning. Siegel began a spending spree. He demanded the finest building that money could buy at a time of post-war shortages. By October 1946, the Flamingo's costs were above $4 million. By 1947, the costs were over $6 million, 
equivalent to $64 million in 2023. By late November of that year, the work was nearly finished. He later announced to his colleagues that he was running the California syndicate by himself and that he would return the loans in his own good time. The mob bosses were patient with him because he had always proven to be a valuable man. The Flamingo opened on December 26, 1946, even though only the casino, lounge, theater, and restaurant were finished. Local people attended the opening, but few celebrities did. A handful drove in from Los Angeles, despite bad weather. Some celebrities present were Raft, June Haver, Vivian Blaine, Sonny Tufts, Brian Dunleavy, and Charles Coburn. Gambling tables were operating, but the luxury rooms were not ready which would have served as the lure for people to stay and gamble. Word made its way to Siegel during the evening that the casino was losing money, and he became irate and verbally abusive, throwing out at least one family. After two weeks, the Flamingo's gaming tables were $275,000 in the red and the entire operation shut down in late January 1947. Siegel did everything he could to turn the Flamingo into a success by making renovations and obtaining good press. He hired Hank Greenspun as a publicist. The hotel reopened on March 1, 1947, with Lansky present, and began turning a profit. However, by the time that profits began improving, the mob bosses above Siegel were tired of waiting. Death On the night of June 20, 1947, as Siegel sat with his associate Alan Smiley in Virginia Hills' Beverly Hills home reading the Los Angeles Times, an unknown assailant fired at him through the window with a 30 caliber military M1 carbine, hitting him many times, including twice in the head. Some looked upon it as a cowardly approach, bushwhacking the formidable and weapons-proficient Siegel from a distance. No one was charged with killing Siegel, and the crime remains officially unsolved. One theory is that Siegel's death was due to his excessive spending and possible theft of money from the mob. In 1946, a meeting was held with the board of directors of the syndicate in Havana, Cuba so that Luciano, exiled in Sicily, could attend and participate. A contract on Siegel's life was the conclusion. According to Stocker, Lansky reluctantly agreed to the decision. Another theory is that Siegel was shot to death preemptively by Matthew Moose Panza, the lover of Sedway's wife B, who went to Panza after learning that Siegel was threatening to kill her husband. Former Philadelphia family boss Ralph Natale claimed that Carbo was responsible for killing Siegel at the behest of Lansky. Charles Luciano Charles Lucky Luciano born Salvatore Lucani on November 24, 1897 was an Italian-born gangster who operated mainly in the United States. Luciano is considered the father of modern organized crime in the United States. He was also the first official boss of the modern Genovese crime family. 